stress has such a heavy, harmful force in our being that it could really destroy our physical and mental and emotional health. Stress, it, it just steals your joy. It steals your excitement. You're different when you talk to people when you're weighed down with stress. And a lot of stress in life comes to decisions. Uh, having to decide, especially big decisions, on what to do. Uh, because big decisions, a lot of times there's no clear answer, right? You should definitely get wisdom. Wisdom will guide you. Wisdom will protect you. It will eliminate the things you shouldn't even consider. Gathering knowledge is righteous. Studying it, analyzing it, and forming a conclusion is... Um, it shows that you care about wanting to try to make the right decision. It shows that you're not reckless when you want to obtain knowledge. Certainly, there is no absolute truth, meaning that, you know, two people can gather the same knowledge but have different perspectives. Good to see you, one flying solo. I often say that when there's a court case, there's a lawyer for the plaintiff and a lawyer for the defendant. Both have studied the same law books, but what they're trying to do is present their case and sway the jury based on their perspective. It's the same law, though, but it's the presentation of the law within their perspective for their case. So I'm saying that to say that truth is hard to find. There's many hung juries in life. Good to see you, Michelle. Thank you. Good to see you, How. And beyond that big picture of what I want to talk about tonight as far as looking at uh, truth and gathering knowledge and, and all these things, when it comes to decisions in your life, and I'm thinking mainly bigger decisions, leaving a relationship, buying a house, selling a house, moving, changing jobs. You know, those decisions, when you're forced to do them, are not decisions. And many times in life, all of us wait till we're forced to do something. Because then we have no choice, and we have to. You know, when I was younger, like I said, there was a season where I racked up debt, and I I knew I was going to pay it back, but I had to figure it out. Like in my mind, I was young and I wouldn't call back debt collectors. Uh, you know, you could do that so long, but you got to eventually, you know, make a decision on how you're going to approach it. And I did, but I, I understand that. You know, I remember my mom saying that, you know, for her, it's very tough to make the decision to finalize the divorce. But she saw the negative effect on the children where she just, there was no decision to be made. It was just... You had, she had to. You know, certainly you may see a layoff coming, but you may not be proactive in getting a new job because it's scary. Certainly you may be uninspired with your house, uninspired where you live, but the fear, the fear of going somewhere new is greater than the anticipation of what's going to end. And this fear okay, brings stress. And this stress makes it even harder to make the right decision. And this is where you need some faith in life. Now, the problem is, you know, we don't want, when we use faith, it's a spiritual and emotional mechanism to help us overcome another emotional mechanism, maybe spiritual, which is fear. You know, we're not just, a computer. We have emotions. So I always say, like, I respect science, and you should. You should gather. It's knowledge. But if you if you eliminate the spiritual or emotional part of humans and of life, then you're not being scientific because you're eliminating part of the evidence that humans are not just a mathematical database. 
they're also a, a, an organism, okay, that is adaptable and not just a, a mathematical equation. And so you, you got to use faith to overcome some things, but you got to have a base of wisdom, a base of knowledge. Because if every decision you make is just grasping for the emotional strength to do something, then eventually there's too many reckless decisions, too much listening to your instinct, and then you meet failure. Now, we all meet failure. So I don't want to act like there's, there's no exact science to life. And even the wisest among us, the strongest among, among us will, will suffer defeat. You know, I often think of like all the boxers and the MMA fighters that at their peak are so cocky, but all of them take a L. Okay, Tyson got knocked out. Uh, McConnor, Gregor McConnor, he got knocked out. Um, I know Floyd's undefeated, but every everyone takes an L in life. Jay Z thought he would never lose. Nas beat him. Everyone takes L. Doesn't mean you can't persevere past that. But I want to tell you what my. I remember my mom told me this also when I was getting ready to change jobs. I was very scared. I went back and forth a lot. I wanted to make the right decision. I'm glad I took the new job. I'm glad I excelled my career because that that totally changed my life. And and the reason I did, because she said, Sam, there was a time in my life where I had the opportunity to take a better job, but I didn't. I got laid off and I always regret doing that. She tried to play it too safe. And so that really gave me the strength that everything, all the other wisdom part of the decision lined up with it was time for me to take this new job. Because again, you got to check your emotions with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And if there's no major red flags, if there's no, uh, there's nothing going to be perfect. The right decision is not the perfect decision. We live in an imperfect world. How can you make a perfect decision? And so we'll get to all live comments. Thank you everyone for being gracious. Great to see you, Twister and Tony and Ryan. And so, She said to me, look, Sam, you do what you want, but just remember, we don't always make the right decision. And that gave me the freedom to fail. Okay. Now, again, don't take that freedom and become a glutton of your freedom where you make all these reckless decisions because you can't. Because just because you have the right to do something, just because you have the freedom to do something doesn't mean you should do it. You got to check it with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And, and so I sit here tonight, you know, as a middle-aged man, halfway through my life. And for me, I guess the next big decision is, do I ever put down roots again? Uh, or do I just stay uh, as a nomad until I'm either forced, eventually we're all forced off the road. Um, but certainly there's ways to live on the road till the very end. I mean, you could die in a campground. There's no, you know, it doesn't matter if you die in a house or an RV, does it? I mean, no, sure, sure not. Uh, it's just a decision that you make on how you want to live. We all share the same fate, which is humans expire. So, but, you know, I really found a lot of joy, happiness, excitement, and even peace in selling my house and getting rid of most of my belongings because there's such a relief. There's not a lot of stress. And I always find it easier to disconnect than to connect because, you know, there's more liability with the more things you have and there's less with the less. So it's like, um, you know, I really never want too much in life uh, as far as material things as far as, um, I, I really don't like real estate that much. It's a very, uh, entangled asset. It is an asset, but it's entangled and there's a lot of things, even a small one. Um, but I say to myself now, you know, which I've been struggling, those who watch this channel know for a couple of years that after I got to this destination of Florida and I settled in working remote and I, I, develop side hustles 
because I have to ensure as a middle-aged man, for me, everyone does their life differently. Uh, I saw a guy today who just travels. He makes bare minimum as a temp worker and he has no health care, but it seems to work for him and he has no kids. So, uh, you know, it's like teach their own. It doesn't work for me. So, uh, but I think at this point, you know, like I've pretty much gotten to a good flow of what I would need to do if, you know, some of the worst case scenarios happen financially, or God forbid a layoff or I need to readjust. I think I, you know, I have a good feel for, you know, how I would adapt. I've studied areas. I know uh, where jobs are. I know where side hustles are. So, you know, then it comes to the question, you know, because because to me, the decision was never on the table until I gathered that data. You know, you should never make a big decision before you get enough information. Because information and studying it and trying to understand it is wisdom. And you don't want a decision to be made without any wisdom. You're always going to have some fear. So you need God to help you. You need uh, strength, courage, faith to overcome fear, stress, anxiety. You know, so, but the question becomes, you know, are, are we del- being delusional to ourselves as far as justifying a decision? And you know, that's very easy to do. Um, you know, like I said, I really don't think you can go wrong when it comes to taking a job that will improve your financial situation, as long as it's not uh, very negative to your quality of life. But I, I want to encourage you that you know, for me in my life experience, everything I needed to do to get enough credentials and enough experience and enough advancement, I had to feel some pain and my, and it had to be a little bit negative, a little less quality of life in the beginning Okay, so I don't want to lie to you. A lot of people lie, but long term, it's given me a lot better quality of life for me. Everyone is different. I respect that. And so, because there's always that pain when you change, you know, and that's why most people stay the same because changing is very painful. Learning new things, very painful. Putting yourself out there, very painful because you know you're going to get hit, you know, but you get hit if you stay still. All right, I want to wrap this up. I want to get to this in under 15 minutes, and then we go all live comments. I learned that in church. I remember, thank you, ESP. Thank you, Jesse. I remember one of the first public speaking I did at church. Uh, the pastor said to the people, well, he said to me and a couple of you got to keep your thing under 15 minutes. And um, at first I was like, under 15 minutes? But yeah, you should need longer than 15 minutes to get them out. Even that's long. So I was thinking today, a a couple more home bases have come up. And I want to encourage anyone looking for a home, if you're in that mood, that my experience now, about two years, after five years living on the road, for the past two years, I've been looking at homes. And I've not taking them. I've gotten close on some. I even went under contract then backed out on some. But there's always been other opportunities. I want to say that to encourage you if you've lost out on some homes or you got devastated or what I'm telling you, even in the most inflated times, even in even when things go off the market quick, in my experience now, they're coming waves. There's a couple homes hit and then for a couple months there's nothing. And I've shown homes on this channel all the way from 39,000 to 300,000. But most of the homes I've shown in Florida, but I can find some in, in New Jersey. I was looking when I was in New Jersey. You can find for under 200,000. Know, I don't think the average person should be spending more than 200,000 for their house if they buy, in my opinion. So that's my biggest decision right now. And I found one that would... Is, is by the beach, it'll work, it's below my means, under under 200 grand. But I, I have such a fear um, for a couple reasons. One is because, you know, again, like, that is the anchor to, you know, like, my new life. You know, it's like, you know, right now, I still feel like if my mom needed me or something major happened, uh, I'm mobile, okay? And, you know... Uh, 
But I also know that, you know, there's some value in having that stability that there could be a, a, an emergency situation where that stability helps me or even helps my mother. The, the, the problem is, and I remember saying this to a real estate agent about a year ago, I wish I, wish I knew the future. <laughs> she laughed. We, we, none of us know the future. The truth is you can make the right or the wrong decision. But the truth is also first use wisdom to eliminate the nonsense. And then give it some time. I always say before you spend $5,000, I consider a big purchase anything more than $5,000. And you can say even more than $1,000. It's up to you. But definitely any purchase under, uh, excuse me, any purchase over $5,000, wait at least 24 hours to 72 hours. One to three days at least. Because I don't believe... Even if you studied a community in an area, I don't believe that, you know, you've given it enough time. That's a big decision. In my opinion, of course, everyone do what they want. You always have some exits, okay, with real estate contracts. You can get out uh, because of um, inspection. When you buy a car, not so much. Once you, once you put your finger on the dotted line for a car purchase, very hard to get out of that. But back to the bottom line, and then let's go all live comments. Is uh, this fear that I have uh, tonight and when I get serious about making this big decision, it, 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 it kind of steals a level of my joy. But I, but I look at my life, I say, man, I've been here before in other situations. And I've overcome it. So I know I could overcome it with the grace of God and, and through the research I've done and through working. So, you know, I don't have the answer tonight. But I wanted to share what I just shared with you because this is the stress of making a decision. Everyone has their own is very overwhelming and paralyzing. And when it comes to purchases, I always tell you when in doubt, don't buy because I rather you be more urgent to accept a promotion, to go after your best life. Buying a house or buying an RV, while they are big decisions and they should be taken like, they are not the decisions that will make your life inherently better. The progression of your career, of your health, of your relationships, those are the biggest decisions. That's all in that self-care bucket. The house, the car, the RV, that's in the living below your means financial freedom bucket. But that comes after the base foundation of, of your routine. And that's what I say, think about as far as buying a house. I say, man, does this house, this home base, I should say, it's not a house, it's a little mobile home lot. Does this improve my daily routine? That's what you should ask because your daily routine is your life. And uh, the answer is, is not 100% clear. In some ways, I see a, some value. Uh, in other ways, I don't see enough um, for what I'd be giving up as far as, I don't know, I, I want to be honest that even though I would not recommend the life I live for most people, because I think it, I think you take a lot of risk when you live in your car with no home base. I don't want to tell you not to do it because I'm doing it. I don't want to be a hypocrite, but I also want to tell you, for for though the situation can change at any minute. You can have a major financial. You can have your car break down. You can have a health problem, and for low income people or people that don't have resources, you could really put yourself in a very bad position. I don't want you to live in fear and I want you to do whatever you want. But, I, you know, that's why I don't like just blanketly recommend people live in their car. But it's also a great feeling, I don't know about, you know, for people with car, but just not being attached to anything. And, you know, I looked at this a lot. All right, one more minute, guys. I'll go to these comments. Forgive me. I looked at this lot, this, this uh, little shack on this lot is like 200 square feet, which I love. Even that, to be honest with you, one of one of my dreams, I, I still like 
like ESP says, I still like the coziness of a car or van to live out of. I don't, but I don't know, like, you know, down the road if I would, but I still do. Why? Because I don't like a lot to take care of. I get, even with the 200 square foot <laughs> shack, believe it or not, you're going to say there's nothing there. There's not much there, but there's, there's two sinks. Okay. Uh, there's a roof. Um, There's some components in that in that little mobile home that just, uh, for whatever reason, I'm being honest with you, they overwhelm me. I know I can handle it because I've already handled it, but it's just, but sometimes in life it's just getting over that hump. You know, I don't know, you know, but I want to just share with you these things because I think they help. You know, I always say to myself, what, what structure topic that have I experienced or that I'm going through, if I focus my energy can I make it so that other people can pick something out of it and apply it to their life and get some strength, some guidance? And this was it tonight. And I want to end on this. Then we're going to all live comments. Is that I, I, you know, once in a while, I, I ask that God, give me the strength to make the right decision. I've done the research. I know the wisdom of the pros and the cons. Wisdom is not perfection. Because again, there's no exact science to life. And faith could be justified to do a lot of reckless things. So I'm not just go by faith, not by say you gotta have balance. And and you know, just do the best you can. Self-care is the best thing you have to do. And I thank God that for whatever reason, you know, the Lord put it in me and I researched it and it really matters to me. I, I thank God that one of the major parts of my life is self-care at this point, you know, and it got, it got there in my thirties. I said, man, something, not, and that's gotta be the foundation of everything. Everything else is a little bit like personal individuality, right? In your circumstance. Because I said to myself, and I was looking, you know, I video chatted my mom, thank God for technology where you can video chat your mother or your friend or whoever, wherever they are in the world. That's a blessing. It's a blessing to be in a developed country. So I saw my mom's got a decision to make, and I saw the stress on her. And, you know, she's got a loving heart. She doesn't do much self-care, though. And uh, I tell you, it's... But I notice even with me, I take good care of myself at this point. I saw someone today and my energy wasn't the same because the stress of this decision was weighing me down. I, now, I showed the good, I always try to show good energy when I see people because I enjoy people that I connect with. I'm, I'm very much to myself, but when I see people I connect with, it's all love. And I said to myself, damn, my energy was different. Why was it different? Because of stress. But don't fear stress. Why? Because look, you know, Stress is part of life, and, and the worst thing you can do is just say, well, I don't want to deal with it, and I'm going to go back to bed. Don't do that. It's not worth it. And uh, that's it. That's all I got. We're going to all live comments. Shout out to you guys and girls. I appreciate you. Uh, one flying solo. What's up? Great to see you, man. Hope you're doing well. Shout out to you. Keep pushing forward one day at a time, especially when you're stressed. One day at a time. Hold on, let me shut the volume off here on my laptop. I, I reserved some more campground stays today. Couldn't get a lot of consecutive days uh, because uh, Florida in the winter, uh, very hard to get consecutive days. Uh, so, you know, but it's fun to get a, to reserve camp spots. I mean, I don't know, it's a little weird. Michelle, great to see you. Al, Sam, blessings to you. Blessings to you also. I won't interrupt. Well, I appreciate you saying hi. I appreciate all my members. I'm very, very grateful for YouTube. I mean, for me, YouTube as a side hustle and as a social connection is both for me. Because um, it allows me to have the connections and do the thing. I would just say that I know I'm fortunate. Okay, I always say, like, when you get too sad or too stressed or too angry, as best you can, try to find things to be grateful for. Why? To pull you back from a bad perspective. Because even if I make a bad decision, I have a lot to be thankful for, okay? Now, again, you put in the work, and you should be rewarded for the work, but you also, there's still some part of life that, you know, just got to be thankful because it could have went either way. Ryan, Sam, 
I feel like I can't be myself because of a bad situation and people I've been forced to be by talk to. Uh, I don't know if I fully get that, but I would say this. I understand the, the context of what you're saying is that to me, the best part about being an adult is that you can go out there and figure out how you want to live and who you want to talk to, including your father and mother. The bad part is that you're going to put more liability on yourself because you, once you burn that bridge, you cannot utilize them. And if you have a disability or if you have uh, major issues, then I understand, you know, you can't get out of that situation, uh, depending on how bad it is or how not. But if you got any abilities, and I always want to encourage you that if you're watching this online, you have the ability to comprehend technology, create a profile and consciously click. So that means there's data entry that you can do. That means that there's some level of capacity that you have. Um, but you, above the capacity, with the capacity, you need a good attitude. And that's what I found. Like I, I met, I know someone today I met that I know, uh, they have a disability. Okay. They have seizures from time to time. And I tell you, uh, she goes to work, um, all the time and uh, she had a bad bout with seizures. And so she had to adjust her work schedule. And, you know, she's trying to make more money and live her dreams. She's got her own dreams. But I'm always in awe. she got a great attitude. Now, is anyone perfect? I'm not perfect. I'm sorry. But I always admire that. And I always say to myself on my journey, because I am, I was always thankful to have all my limbs. I remember being in history class and asking my history teacher, why are certain people born handicapped? Why others? And he just looked at me like, you know, I can't explain that. And what I found is, you know, I can't, no one can explain that. But what I found with people with different disabilities, some mental, some physical, some emotional, is that some have good attitudes, some have bad. I found the same thing with non-disabled people. You know, sometimes when I'm in a grocery store in a rich area, I see there's a little bit of an arrogance, a little bit of a like not happy. And I said to myself, damn, why wouldn't you be happy? This is the best it gets. And at the same time, I've been in poor areas where they're not happy either. So rich, poor, handicapped, non-handicapped. I don't know why, but some people have a good attitude. Some people have a bad attitude. All I can tell you is as best you can work on having a good attitude. Because no matter what your situation, no one wants to bless a bad attitude person. And, and you don't make your situation better. You're not going to get out of a bad situation with a bad attitude. You're not. You know, like how you know the trolls are totally delusional for somehow in their delusional mind, they think the meaner I am to the creator, the more thumbs down, the more I put nasty comments, I'm going to change them. Life don't work like that. They don't understand life. They don't even pay for their own toilet paper. So, you know, until you move out and you pay for your own toilet paper and you pay for your own water, you know, then you'll understand life until then you're delusional, you know? So back to your comment, Ryan, how do you get out? Basically you're in a bad situation. How do you get out of it? Well, number one is you got to have a good attitude. And then number two is you got to take accountability for what you can control. Then number three, you got to go after your best life because no one's going to give it to you, but people will help you the better attitude you have and the more effort you apply. But if you have a bad attitude and you're not doing effort, you're just complaining and blaming you're going to fit right in a bad situation because misery loves company and bad people love to be nasty to each other. And I know you've seen it because I know you guys seen life. I know that God will give you the strength to make the right decision to overcome evil. Greater is the spirit in you than in the world. Greater is the spirit in the person who has paid for their own toilet paper than the person who is unthankful and uses someone else's toilet paper. I want to tell you tonight, share this video, click the thumbs up, and may the Lord be with you on your journey to buying your own toilet paper. Because there is nothing more humbling than going to the store and saying, damn, all that for paper towels and toilet paper? And yeah, that's how much it cost. Now, I've done that, did that for 15 years when I had a house. It's going to cost you. And I also did the Nomad Life. I got gym memberships. Gym memberships pay for some toilet paper. You can use toilet paper every anytime you want. 
But I want to tell you that you can't change other people. You can only change yourself. And if you want to get into a better situation, stop trying to make other people change. Stop waiting for them to change. And stop waiting for other people to want to do what you want to do. Because they're, they're, everyone has their own idea of what life should be. And with an individual fingerprint, you're different than your mother, brother, son, daughter. You have to figure out what it is for you so you can unlock your life. The smartphone has biometric entry. Okay. So for you to unlock your phone, I know for mine, you got to use your fingerprint. No one else in the world has your fingerprint. No one. So for me, I use that parable of life. You can seek counsel and you should. You should get a variety of opinion. But only you can unlock your life because only you know you. This is the message of the Lord. God bless you. Hal, Sam, going to be speaking facts tonight. Thank you. And, and I want to, I asked, I've been asking God, I still want to be passionate when I'm inspired, but I said, God, help me to make more videos where it's a more, I, I, I'm able to tone myself down a little bit. Okay. Uh, even though I still want to be fiery, I want to mature even in my approach. Why? I, I just feel it. I feel that I think there's a level of wisdom to it. I think it, it can reach more. I still want to be myself. I still want to hit that fire. But I want to balance it because I want to overcome the next dimension of my growth. Uh, I'm not some person who thinks that, oh, I've reached the top. I mean, someone thought I reached the top when I hit 15,000. I'm almost at 28,000. So, but I see, I don't say that in pride. I say that to myself that, I always have to have the mindset of there's some things I can do better because if I don't think that, then I think too much of myself. Now, if I think of myself, how other people think of me, then they're my master. No one's my master. No one's your master. Jesus said, don't let anyone call you father. Don't let anyone call you master. Don't let anyone call you teacher. No one is above you. No one's beneath you. You're on your own journey and you connect with other like-minded people. Thank you very much, Hal. The psychopaths are not taking notes. They're taking toilet paper from their parents and they're online all night. So total disgrace. <laughs> uh, Tony. Hello, Sam, everyone. Tony, great to see you. Twist out. Hello, everyone. Sam, just another day of being fully engaged. I worked my shift at Dunkin' Donuts, very proud of you, then two to three hours of school working on my group project, now going home to cook for my family. That is going to pay off in the future. When you're in your 20s, the best investment is in yourself, not crypto. Why? When you develop your work ethic, your knowledge, and your empathy, you will be an overcomer. When you develop your trading skills, you'll be dead broke in your 30s, you'll have no career credentials. And you'll be hoping, okay, that there is some type of robot that's going to just give you money. Now, grace be with you if you're that person, because I don't want anyone to suffer unnecessarily. But I want to tell you, as someone who after high school, I worked during the day, and I went to school at night for five years, and I got other people in that program to try to help them. What I learned is opportunity is one thing, doing the work is another. A lot of people who start don't finish. Now, by the grace of God and through hard work, I finished. And what I learned is if you can go to school at night for five years and work during the day and work overtime, you will overcome. Why? Because, look, you want to improve your life. And the work is plentiful, but the workers are few. And there will always be opportunity for people who are willing to feel some pain of working a job they're scared to work, not always, you know, doing the easy thing. Uh, I think that you should work to make your life easier, especially as you get older, but I have not seen anyone on a consistent basis, skip the step of paying their dues and live this great sustainable life. Certainly there's exceptions, but on average, what I've seen come from a working class, 
spend time with the poor, spend time with the rich. What I've seen in life, no matter which spectrum, for the most part, there's exceptions on all ends, is that if you don't do the work of your life, if you don't pay your dues, if you don't do some things you don't want to do, nothing will ever get better. You're trying to skip a step. It's like a psychopath who puts together a, 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 a bookshelf assembly for their new house. And they skip two steps. And at the end, their bookshelf is totally wobbly and they got extra parts. It's because they skipped the step of paying their dues. And now they just spent three hours or three years of their life in waste. Because they thought they could. I, I skipped some steps putting some furniture together. Never forget it. And what I learned is do things in order. And if you don't want to do that step, don't have a house. <laughs> don't have furniture. And I think about that. I was looking at, in that 200 square foot house tonight. Uh, yesterday, I was looking. I said, like, damn. How, how, there's too much furniture here. I told one flying solo, one chair, one bed. Now, that's all there was. A single person should only get a one bedroom or a studio. I made that mistake. I got a two bedroom condo. Now, so what should you do? Whatever you want, but I'm sharing with you. Less is more. Now, for an investment, bigger may be better because there's more people who want to buy a bigger house than a smaller house. But for me, investments and where you live are, you know, not always the same. And there's emotional health, not just financial. Good job, Twister. I'm um, getting to all these comments. If I miss a comment, please type it again. Thank you. If you're a psychopath using your mom's toilet paper and you're hoping I let you in a chat, it's not going to happen. So just throw a fitting rage and take another shit and use them another toilet roll. Twister. By the way, Sam, something you said the other day stuck with me. Part of not caring what the world thinks of you is knowing you've hit your potential. Can't do that without the work. There you go. Look, there's no doubt about it. We all need help in this world. Now, I have not gotten where I'm at without help. Uh, so I don't want to act like, you know, just ah, forget everyone. But I'm saying that there's certain times where if you only do something, if other people uh, prove you or tell you to do it, you're never going to grow. Uh, and you're going to make some wrong decisions where you're not going to, you know, you don't care what people think, but you make the bad one. But that's how you grow, pain. Uh, you know, so it's okay. Don't be scared to make a bad decision. I mean, within reason, use wisdom. Wisdom will guide you. Wisdom will protect you. It'll keep you away from too many reckless decisions. See, you can make the wrong decision, but wisdom will keep you from making too many reckless decisions. Now, once in a while, you still want to have a little bit of reckless. Okay, I did some, but may wisdom protect you. Pat, Sam, cold here. Pat, love to you. It's hot here. Uh, 80 degrees again in South Florida. Uh, beach, sand, bikinis, no state income tax, and gas is about $3.26 for regular, depending on where you're at. Twista, oh, and Sam, I apologize, but my phone might die soon. No problem. I am walking to my car when my charger is. All love to you, brother. I appreciate you telling me. My man, Charles, very proud of him. Charles is going on his journey traveling, going to LA or California. I'm not sure, a part of California, and then eventually Europe. I know it's scary, but I also know that you're doing it, so you're overcoming fear. And I also know that you moved, Charles moved from Michigan to Florida. So he, he's already done some of the things. I often say when you're scared to make a decision, look back at your past life or, or look back at your past and get strength from your former decisions that you did when you were scared. You know, I often tell my mom, I said, Ma. You got through a divorce, you raised three kids, you worked so many jobs. You know, you're not this weak, timid person. The Bible says that we can't achieve anything in being timid. We have to be bold. Now, being humble and being scared helps us to be humble. All right, because you could be too bold and go too far. And you end up on that range of, I'm not going to say the word that I wanted to say. I'm going to, I'm going to try to use self-control today. But, you know, uh, let's stay positive. Charles, thank you for your kind words. I, I got respect for you, brother. I appreciate your mentoring. Hey, you're mentoring me too. Like I always tell you guys and girls, the only relationships you want to keep and develop in your life are reciprocal. Meaning that there's a, a mutual level of love and respect. 
Now, sometimes there's always imbalances. Sometimes I say the wrong thing. Sometimes I, I probably do hurt people. And sometimes you probably hurt people. So I don't, it, look, that's, it's inachievable to have a perfect relationship because we're imperfect. But overall, you want the relationship to be reciprocal in your personal life. Uh, Pago, glad fall colors are out. Yeah, look, fall has some value. I enjoyed fall when I was up seeing my mom in New Jersey and I did videos of the fall colors. But I also enjoy the vivid green, living a vida loca, palm trees, pink flowers, and the vivid Easter colors of South Florida. Why? Because the trees never die, nothing dies, it just stays vivid. Now, will that wear you out? For, for some people, it does. Florida is not for everyone, and it could bore you. I mean, I think about, you know, look, it is nice to travel a little bit, to be mobile. Uh, I'm not, I already know most of the world and most of the country is not of my liking. Uh, but that doesn't mean it applies to you. So for me, there's very little areas that I have a desire to want to go. You have to have a desire to do something and everyone has different desires. You know, you have, may have a desire to go to this place, that place. I may not. I may have a desire to be in South Florida. You may hate South Florida. Everyone has different desires. Remember, especially too, I'm even guilty of this, like, we tend to think everyone should have the desires we have. But if everyone liked exactly what you like, there'd be none for you. Okay. I often say like, you know, if I don't like, uh, you know, if I don't like something, that means there's more for you. If you don't like Florida, that means there's more for me. So when we start to begrudge other people for not going to this place, not going to that place or not doing that, remember, that means that that's what makes the world go around. If everyone liked and if everyone did the same thing, the world would not be in proportion. It would not work. So for whatever mystery reason, that's why. Believe me, guys, I, I, I asked the Lord, give me self-control because there was a lot of crazy stuff I wanted to say in that. I stayed pretty calm. Uh, Pat, save the Winn-Dixie chicken. Yeah, I've, I've seen the Winn-Dixie since I've been back in Florida. They don't have Winn-Dixie in New Jersey. They have Acme and ShopRite. Um, so in Florida, they have Publix, Winn-Dixie, Sprouts, and some Whole Foods. And Fresh Market. Fresh Market went public too. Since they went public, food went a little bit down. I'm not going to lie. So I haven't stopped in a Winn-Dixie since I've been back. The last time I've been to a Winn-Dixie was in Marcos Island, Florida like two years ago. And that one was okay. Because there was only, that, that was, I think, the only major supermarket on the island. That's Southwest Florida. But other than that, I really don't do Winn-Dixie. Uh, she goes, Winn-Dixie is the official ambassador of Leesburg. Yeah, I don't, yeah, Leesburg, uh, I guess that's in the Upper Peninsula. I don't know anything about Leesburg. I love you, Pat. Jesse, my first ever member. Gratitude to you, Jesse. She goes, I was interested in a house. Then I found out it failed septic inspection. Now I don't even want a house anymore. Look, sometimes not getting a house is a relief. Okay. What do you need to know if you're looking at a house or a dwelling? You need to know the electrical system, the plumbing system, and the HVAC system. Those are the three components that make a house. That's a full hookup. If your house doesn't have a good electrical system, you don't have the proper electric or safety hazard. If it doesn't have the proper uh, uh, water or if there's a water leak, that's a major infrastructure problem. And if it doesn't have the proper heating or cooling, major problem. I always, guys, I don't want central air and heat. I want a window air that I can replace easy, even if it, even though it's more inefficient, it would cost more electric. But, and a fan, I'm probably not even going to use that AC unless I really need it. Because at night, you could just run a fan most of the time and be fine. Uh, in a 200 square foot house, I'll be fine. And this little 200 square foot shack, it's got two window units. I ain't mad at that. I don't want central air because then I got to call HVAC tech. I don't want to call it. I just want to throw the window unit in, throw it out. Uh, so those are things you have to think of. I know this person ain't going back up right next to me. I might have to cut this live feed because this is the spirit of the Lord. Oh, uh, that, that's something else. They're going to do it, too. Uh, that's okay. I'm not staying here. Because to me... 
man, when you get that close, there's something wrong in your mind. I can't believe that right there. 20 spots, and you know where they go? Right next to me. That's right. That's okay. I love them. I'm not mad. So let me just do this pull in here. I'll tell you. I mean, home base may be coming, guys. Unbelievable. Let's stay positive tonight. But I, I, I have empathy. Uh, <laughs> I have empathy, uh, Jesse. Uh, I can totally understand. Look, I, I, that's the part of buying a house I really don't want to deal with. Uh, maintenance. I hate maintenance. One thing I like about renting or nomading or campgrounds, no maintenance. I'm not going to lie. Uh, ESP. Listening in the background. Hey, Sam. Hey, HP. I'm very proud of you for taking the promotion. Thank you for listening. Uh, and I love and appreciate you. God bless you. Um, Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Great to see you. Love to you and appreciation to you, Aaron. Thank you for all your insights and encouragement. Pat. ESP. Who would win? Grizzly Bear versus Win dixie Chicken. One flying solo. Amen, Sam. Letting go of possessions plus... Plus, too many commitments has freed my mind. Buddhist monks only have four or five possessions. Yeah, they probably got more than me. Robes, a bowl of food, and razors. Interesting. They're original minimalist. Yeah, you know that now that you say that? I think I've heard of that, but I'm glad that you brought that up because I, I, I wasn't reflecting on that recently. Yeah, there's a lot to be said for that. Now, the only part about the monks I don't get is... Then they wear a robe, they go in the middle of nowhere, they got no smartphone, they're on the top of a mountain with a bunch of other dudes. I don't know if I could do that part, but I respect where they're at. That go. The Winn-Dixie chicken has a chicken coop, but it's also free range. Damn. Pago, you know your Winn-Dixie chicken. Pago. My friend had a pet chicken. He would sleep in a dog cage inside at night, and he'd be free range outside during the day. A lot of chicken emojis. Pat, that's an interesting uh, childhood memory. Tony, you are a good son, Samuel. Tony, thank you for the encouragement. No one's truly good, um, but I'm thankful. Look, I got a good mother, and uh, I, I know because I've seen life. I've seen people who, who haven't had uh, parents at all or bad parents. Uh, now, look, though, it's it's all perspective because, like I say, my my siblings may have their own perspective. Everyone's got a different perspective. So one thing that has helped me as I gotten older is it's not my responsibility to, to understand or try to help everyone's perspective. I have to have empathy that there's different perspectives than mine, but I, I can't control everyone. I can't save everyone. I can't. That's their journey. Everyone has their own journey. So remember that if you have siblings, friends, family, uh, respect and have empathy, but you also got to have boundaries because that, you can grow up in the same house same opportunities and every child is going to have their own perspective their own personality ryan and and their own gifts because to be honest with you uh some of my siblings you know they some things that maybe i don't everyone's got different things they do and, you know, i don't but let's stay positive let's stay positive <laughs> stay positive everyone makes the world go around okay because there's some things that i want to deal with but at the same time I don't deal with them, but there's some things that shouldn't be dealt with. I want to tell you this. If you have a duplex, it destroys your marriage. It destroys your relationships with your siblings. It destroys your inheritance. Property should never be owned with family. Why? Because the stress causes drug use. The drug use causes I owe you, you owe me. The lawyers come involved, probate. That's what causes divorces. That's what causes enabling. A property enablers living together sharing money you pay for this i pay for that oh they gave you this money they gave you that all dysfunction and they live with dysfunction they watch you with dysfunction they love you but it's dysfunction and what i want to tell you is separate love them respect them but i i could feel it watching me in my soul that i respect that everyone does their own thing but i could tell you if there weren't certain things that Keep this dysfunction going. Okay. People would actually be able to work on themselves. Okay. But they can't. They got to work for family or they got to work for this. Because it's all tied together in a ball of dysfunction. 
It is of my opinion, guys, that married couples should not own investment properties together. It is of my opinion, okay, that you shouldn't leave property for people. Because I saw, even when my mother inherited property, and that's the only thing that kept us out of poverty, my father paid child support, but raising three kids with the jobs my mom had, we would have been in poverty, even with child support. So I thank God that she was left property, but I want to tell you, I saw two years of fighting with her sisters. It was a disaster. And I saw, and I believe owning property with my father, that's part of the divorce too. Because I seen the stress of owning property when it comes to a regular relationship, raising kids, and then you're a property manager, you own a duplex, you own this, you own that. It's a disaster. That's my testimony. That's the word of the Lord. Never, my opinion, never own real estate multifamily property together. Why? It's too much stress. It'll cause dysfunction. And then it's a, oh, I'll do this for you. You do that. I'll do this. You do that. And then it's all a big cluster fuck. Big cluster. That's my opinion. Ryan, watching the leaves change colors gives me a stomach pit in my stomach. Gives me a stomach pit. Yeah. Look, I empathize with those who have to suffer through winter and, and don't want to. And you know I can empathize because I spent two years living in my car in the winter in New Jersey. So I know. But I was actually more excited then than when I was living in my house at the end because I was excited that I'm almost free. So for the odd reason, for this odd situation that I was actually happy in the winter living in my car because it was the first time in my life that I didn't have the burdens of taking care of a house. And I don't think you should buy a house before you're 25. I don't. I think you should move out. Um, I don't know. You know, there's no exact science to life, but, you know, I look, you know, and I got help to buy my house and, I, and that was a major contentious thing too, you know, and sometimes I say to myself, is that a good or bad thing? In many ways it was good, but some ways it was bad. Yeah, it's a tough thing. You don't know how your life would have played out without it. So I, I don't know, you know, you know, some things that I did, I think were good. And some things, you know, my parents helped me with, I think were very good. I'm very fortunate. Uh, and I put in the work behind it, you know, like that's the problem too. You know, it's like, uh, it's just tough. There's no exact science, but I want to go back to your comment, which is look, you would, when it's cold and you can't go outside, and especially in the dead of the winter, it, it, the quality of life is negative. Okay. And when you feel stuck, the resentment and uh, the bad mental health and the fighting, it's it's bad. So what should you do if you're in that situation? Liquidate as much as you can. Increase your income, maximize your options so that you can push forward. Aaron, at Pat Go, I don't get what chickens or when Dixie has to do with anything. He's talking about, did I miss something? You yeah, know, Aaron, uh, uh, Pat Go kind of just has a good sense of humor. So we love Pat Go. I kind of get it, but I appreciate what you're saying, Aaron. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Pat Go is just uh, has a great sense of humor. I'll say that. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, oh, Twist, I missed you. Damn, man, I'm so fucking lead on these chats. I'm sorry, Twist, I missed your super chat, man. Forgive me. I hate when people do that. All fire emojis. Twist, I'm sorry. I hope you're still listening. I hate when people do live chats and they don't see the super chat quick. I feel like they ignore them. Twist, I'm sorry. Thank you with all my heart. You know I appreciate that. And I love you. And I thank you with all my heart. I do, man. You've been very gracious. You're doing a great job. Thank you again, Aaron. Aaron also said, congrats on more campground days. Thank you, Aaron. That may help with stress. And definitely, as a temporary home base. Look, I definitely acknowledge and realize this time back down in Florida, I need to eliminate uh, most of the stealth, if not all the stealth parking. I could do it. I've had no problem with it, most of all. But there's stress. I'm always kind of like one eye open. Uh, and I don't, to me, that's I'm that's taking too much risk. It's, too, it's not enough wisdom for me at this point in my circumstance. Now, again, I've been doing this for five years, for, for five of those years, 90% stuff camping. So I don't want to begrudge anyone living that life. But I want to say at this point in my journey, I feel it's unwise for me to do it. It's just way too much risk. 
and I need to now deploy some of my resources to supplement some of that risk with a level uh, and, and pay for it. Tony, man, welcome, man. Welcome back. Thank you, Tony, for joining. Thank you for being very patient and gracious with me along my journey. You've been very gracious. So thank you, Tony. Thank you. Backslash, you're still with me, man. What's up, Backslash? Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Great comment as well. Uh, Pat Go. It looks dark. It is. There can you see the stars at night at the campground? Yes, the campground is excellent. I can see the stars at night. Great campground. Very quiet. Uh, and you can see them over Lake Superior. Well, that's good, Pat. I'll tell you that um, Sunday, we're going to get out a dark, dark an hour earlier uh, in most states in America. So be mindful of that. And uh, we'll go from there. I hope I'm getting good reception because I see this looks like now it's breaking up. Um, Pat, the star of Bethlehem will be visible about December 21st. I never heard of that. It is very bright. Okay, I never heard of that. Michelle, um, I had to steal toilet paper in college. I did that too when I first moved out. Many years ago from bathrooms in, yeah, in the lecture hall. Now, that's all good. Like, I did the same thing when I moved out. And, you know, now, I mean, I pay for gym memberships or I pay for campgrounds. I don't take the toilet paper with me, but I use all the toilet paper I want, and I love it. I ain't going to lie about that. Uh, Pat Go, you can see the Milky Way over Lake Superior. Yeah, look, it is, you know, the more time I've spent as a nomad, I've experienced more of these outdoor moments than I did 15 years owning a house. I never really appreciated the stars at night, you know, or just being outdoors. Like, I was in Starbucks working today for a couple hours. And then when I went out for my afternoon walk, I was like rejuvenated, man. You got to get fresh air, man. You got to get out in the elements. Oh, but that's why, to me, you got to live in a good weather state because, like, that's why I wanted to relocate to Florida. Why? In the winter, I, I, I got to be, I don't want to not be able to go outside and go for a walk. You know how many layers I used to put on the walk? Nah, I ain't doing that. Florida for the wind, home base maybe, yeah. Uh, uh, Pat. Hey, Aaron, sometimes I have to watch without the sound on because I'm at the same room with other folks watching. Like Cartoon Mark, <laughs> when I can listen, I'm probably laughing. Pat, you got a great sense of humor. I appreciate you both. Aaron, I have a kid, not the Miami one. Okay, yeah, one of her sons is going to a bachelor party in Miami who is 24 and has 60K in the bank. Well, that's awesome. Great with money. That's awesome. Single and minimalist. Huh. He's winning. That's great. His struggle now is balanced. That's interesting. He feels like he's not having fun in his 20s. Yeah, I'll tell you that because that's an, I, I've never, I, I didn't have anything like that in my 20s and I worked a lot. So if he's in his 20s and he has that much saved and no debt and he's a minimalist already, uh, then yeah, he's sacrificed. He's disciplined himself. I wasn't even that at that point in my 20s. So yeah, he does have to balance that because I've all, I also indulged in luxury. I indulged in spend, and you should, you know, I indulge in everything, food, life, uh, chicks. So the key as we get older is balance. So it, even for him to recognize it or for you to recognize that is wisdom. That's awesome. You got two good kids. Great. Michelle, Aaron, it's important to have fun when you're young. Yeah, there is a balance. There, there is, there is. It's scary because you got to do some risky things to experience life, but it's true. Michelle, you can't do much for $10. Uh, yeah, no, $10, that's not going to get you much at all. Yep. Uh, oh, yeah, he said, and then he goes, oh, I, I missed a comment. He goes, uh, Aaron was saying his rule is that he can spend $10 in fun money for every grand he saves. Oh, yeah, that's way too out of balance. That seems extreme to me. No, that is. What do you think? Uh, well, I'm glad I went back and read this comment. His life, I know. Well, a couple things. One is you are correct. It's his life. And he has to find his way to balance. There was a time in my life where I let myself go. I ate whatever I wanted. I didn't want to hear about balance. There was a time where I, I, I ate only what I needed to live. And I didn't want to hear about balance. So you can gently encourage and plant a seed from time to time. But ultimately, he has to find the balance within himself. Uh, that would be my advice. That's interesting. Those very good comments. Yeah, and Michelle says you can't do too much for $10. Yeah. You know, I was always big most of my life, and then, of course, I became obese. But then when I got down to damn near anorexia, I remember some people saying to myself, 
Sam, how many calories are you eating? Are you eating enough? And I remember that that offended me. And I, here I am, like 30 years old, and to have someone ask me, like, am I eating enough? To me, I took offense. I, now I understand. I never understood the mind of a skinny extreme person. Now, some people who are skinny, like it's just a, uh, a chemical imbalance or a DNA thing. But for those who are like struggling to eat right, I, I empathized at that moment where I guess people who are anorexic or people have eating disorder, like, damn, it's offensive to say to a skinny person, are you eating enough? I didn't know that. Um, Aaron, it's okay, Epac Go. I've worked a lot lately and thought I missed things is all. No, no worries. I love to laugh a lot. Yes. Aaron, that's why I worry about Michelle, too. Uh, that, she goes, that's what I worry about, too, Michelle. Uh, two kids who are extreme opposites. Isn't that the kid? Every child has their own personality. I remember when my pet died. I remember someone saying to myself, Sam, it's up to you if you want to get another pet. But just remember, every pet has their own personality. So, you know, if you ever, like, get another pet or you have another child, you think, well, they're going to replace the one that I lost. Nah, everyone's different. Yep. Uh, back to live comments. Michelle, you can enjoy the outdoors, I hope. He gets to travel. Yeah, it's weird, you know, Michelle and everyone. When I was in my early... When I was in my early 20s, I went out... You know, I did the regular things, club, city, parties, whatever. Uh, when I got into my mid-late 20s, I became a recluse. And I don't want to go out. And then, you know, in my 30s, I started to explore the outdoors. So there is a season of life for everything, even being a recluse. Uh, so I don't want to begrudge any of that. But the hard part is that you want to pull yourself out of a, a season at a certain point because every season ends. So if you were a parent or a loved one, what do you tell someone who's out of balance? Well, you can't tell them much. What you do is you plant a seed of a, a suggestion in a timely way without being controlling. And you pray that that seed takes root if it's meant to be. Uh, and, you know, that's all we can do. Uh, Aaron, he's now forcing himself to take a one-year trip. He went to Fort Lauderdale recently with my wild one so that he helps to have a free spirit brother. Yes, yeah, interesting. Uh, you know, I remember when I used to hear people call up Dave Ramsey like, Dave, can you help me? I got 200 grand in the bank and I don't know what to do. I can't spend any money. I feel so bad every time I spend money. I said, man, get the fuck out of here, rich prick. And then I became a rich prick. And I understood now what, what the rich psychopath feels that it's like scared to spend a dollar, you know, well, not a dollar, I'm, you know, but I, I empathize with a lot of life is emotional. I mean, some of it's science, but it's emotional. Michelle, Aaron, that's nice that they have each other. Yeah, it's tough with siblings. Aaron, Michelle, I agree. Amazing. They get along so well. Well, that's a good, they are so different. No complaints here. Well, that's good that they, there's least civility. Uh, I got love for my siblings, but I think in life for me, it's just better with boundaries because we're just too different. Uh, but they did a lot for me in certain times in their own way. So I feel always feel bad because I don't want people to, to feel that I don't talk to anymore. I don't want them to feel that I don't appreciate things they've done for me. And I haven't figured out that algorithm. All I could do is hope that they know that I appreciate everything, and you know, that, but I got to have boundaries. Damn it, four ninety nine super chat, Yadara, Yadara. Thank you very much, bull. <laughs> that's a cute super sticker. Two little guys. I guess that's they got a bullhorn preaching the word of the Lord. That's me uh, tonight, Yadara. Forgive me for saying your name wrong. I'm in the all night gas station, trying to say a good message, trying to share my journey. Now, I appreciate. I appreciate your tip of gratitude. Thank you very much very much thank you also twister uh back to these live comments hopefully i get to them in order uh pat the wind dixie chicken had a fun youth as a chick he ran around free in the sun and the fresh air with grass beneath his feet hmm, that's interesting twister out laughing good aaron laughing that pull up close did you realize that damn yeah see that's what a little suspect that pulled close with 20 open spots happened to me yesterday. 
And I thought of you dealing with the public. Yep, that's the ne biggest negative. Other than, well, extreme client and dealing with the public are the two biggest negatives as I know. And finding a place to park. Top three things. The three worst things living in a car or just being a nomad with no home base. Extreme weather, dealing with the public, and a place to park. Uh, if you can figure those three things out, you got a shot. But there's no exact science. ESP, oh my God. This may be the first live feed with you driving. It's happened a couple times, but not often. Why? Because I, I research, I go out of my way to be isolated. And when, when someone comes into my isolation space, I say, oh my God, is it going to go down tonight? What is going on? Because you're like, I'm saying to myself, you got to purposely want to park next to me for some strange reason. And that's all, it's crazy. And as I get more popular on YouTube, I'm more self-conscious of like, I'm always like, you know, I'm not under the radar as much. And that's a little bit negative, you know. You know what it is, ESP. The Win Dixie Chicken is in your back window. I'll tell you, Pat. I remember one of my first live feeds out of Psychopath. This is when, like, anyone can comment about anything. Out of Psychopath come on live feed. Oh, look behind you. There's Freddy Cougar. So now, I didn't look because I knew it was a Psychopath. He had a picture of the Joker as an avatar. And I said, look, Psychopath, don't bust my balls. Okay, because you know the Joker who played that in the movie, you know he committed suicide, right? Because he was talking negative of how you're talking. I don't wish that on you. But don't pull pranks. I don't like pranks, guys. I'm not a prank person. I, I remember I played freshman football. Guys, people play pranks all the time. I hate that shit. I don't do pranks. I want to tell you right now, if you're doing pranks, guys, we're not going to be friends. Why? Yeah, I, I want to go through all the hardships of life. Then I want to come home. Where I fall asleep and someone put hot sauce in my tongue. Yeah, that's what I want. No, I don't want that, guys. Okay. I don't want pranks. Uh, Aaron. He's being tested with that balance tonight. I'll tell you, ESP and, and uh, Aaron, you know. ESP, I pack go. A bear would tear up that chicken. I'll tell you, man. I uh, See, I was going to say another crazy thing, but I'm very much exercising self-control tonight. Now, whether that's a... A good thing, or but look at this. I'll tell you, this world. See, I gotta get out of these gas stations. But this is why I'm doing campgrounds. And I stay positive. Always gotta be on alert, man. Um, Pat. See, and I should have backed up, man. See, I, I backed into a parking spot. I gotta look behind me. Damn it. Um. Uh, Pat, go. The wind Dixie chicken would fight like Godzilla. He'd bounce high in the air, shooting fire out of his mouth. Damn. All right. Well, I hope that motherfucker ain't behind me. Pat. ESP. Who would win? Grizzly Bear versus Ben Carson with a hammer. We all know Ben Carson is a psychopath. At least that's what Trump said. Then he put him in charge of uh, low-income housing in America. <laughs> Backslash. Yo, Sam. It's cold as shit in Michigan. Everyone I know in Michigan moved to Florida. Who's left in Michigan? I don't know, man. Maybe a couple panhandlers. Get the hell out of Michigan. Tony. Sammy. What's up? Thank you again, brother. Sammy. I don't know what happened. I thought I had auto pay. Well, Tony, uh, I'm not entitled to anything. You don't owe me anything. Anyone who's a member, and there's a lot of them that have been gracious to me. Uh, you know, sometimes, especially after some of my live feeds, I look at some man. Sometimes my membership goes down. Sometimes it goes up. Uh, the highest number of members I ever had was 60. Right now, I'm in the 50s. Uh, so even that, to me, is amazing. Uh, I often said when I started membership, if I can get up to 100 members, that'd be awesome. 1,000 would be a major goal. 100 is 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 the first goal. 1,000. Uh, will I ever get there? Look, I think everything is consistency, but I always tell you guys, out of 27,000 subs, we got 60 people in live chat. There's... Well, I, yeah, I would say there's about 60 people engaged in my channel. The other 26,940 guys, they're just like, oh, inspirational moment. So in life, there's a very small percentage of um, conversion when it comes to a high level of connection personally and business-wise. I'm saying that to share this information with you in life. And I learned some of this when I was watching baseball. I said, man, isn't it amazing that someone can bat 300 
and make it to the Hall of Fame. When you bat 300, that means that you only hit the ball, you only get on base, whatever, 70% of uh, 30% of the time. If you bat 300, that means 70% of your at-bats end in failure. So the, the amount of success in life is always going to be a smaller percentage than the things you do. But when you make contact with the few that you make contact with, you knock it out of the park. And you have to go through the pain of the 70% failure. Uh, Tony, how are you doing, Sam? I'm doing the best I can, man. I'm trying to ask God for the strength to make the right decisions in my life and to use wisdom and uh, faith and uh, not just emotion. Uh, it's a balance. Twister, no need to apologize, Sam. Thank you. Much love. I appreciate you understanding, man. Appreciation to you. Reciprocal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tony, man, Valley Forge is gorgeous. I've never been there. Aaron, so helpful, Sam. Seeds are exactly what I've been doing. Oh, yeah, you're smart. Thanks for helping me. I feel like I'm right on the right track. You're killing it, Aaron. You're doing great. Hardest job is to be a parent. And ultimately, love covers a multitude of sin. But ultimately, you love your child. And there's no guarantee. You're gonna, you may have a child that goes down a bad path with drugs, relationships. None of your children are better than the other. They're all just different. I'm not better than my siblings. My siblings aren't better than me. We're all just different. Um, what can you do? You only can do what you can do. Everyone's going to live their own life. Thank you again, Yadara. Uh, forgive me for saying his name wrong. Uh, Yadara, thank you very much for that gracious uh, super sticker. Very cute emojis. Aaron, have you ever told them that you appreciate what they've done for you? Sometimes just coming out and saying it will help you to not feel bad about unsaid things. Yeah, it's an interesting comment, uh, Aaron. I, I believe I have throughout the years. As I've gotten older, though, I felt that it's best for me and my siblings to have limited contact. Why? Because anytime we start to have more contact like that, there's too much conflict and stress. But I have, I have reached out to them. And I remember even specifically now in my mind, sharing with them, don't take offense that I don't reach out. But for me to be in a healthy place, I have to have these boundaries. And uh, they understand, or that's what they said they understand. So that I, I try. And you're right though. Uh, Aaron, that could be a huge softy, Sam, practice for you. Yeah, no, I did do that already. So now it's just boundaries. Uh, you know, like I said, I mean, if there was an issue, I have no problem talking to them. But I know the energy is, there's only so much we could talk about because they're living a totally different life at this point than on certain things. I can't even feel that energy because it so negatively affects me. I to my mom, like I, I, I was conscious that I, I couldn't even be in the same room as certain people. Not because I, I hate them, it's because I know what negatively affects me. And if it negatively affects me, then, I, then I'm going to be mean to my mom or mean to other people. I, as an adult, have to be responsible for the positions I put myself in. And when I start to feel bad about having a lot of boundaries, I look at when I don't have boundaries, the result. And that's what gives me the strength to keep them. But I got love for everyone. Tony, man, they need a sax sticker. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I think I saw a, sa a sax sticker one time. All, all I'll tell you is I played the saxophone. <laughs> it felt like for two weeks, maybe two months. And then I gave up. But I, I like the saxophone. Sexy instrument. Pago, lots of bears need pigeon forge. I never heard of that. Oh, near pigeon forge? Tony, Pat, there's a lot of bears everywhere. I don't think there's bears in Florida. But probably every cold state, yeah. Pat, not in Amazon rainforest. Yeah, that's hot. I don't think they're there. Tony, there's a lot of jaguar in Amazon. Maybe that's true. Yeah, because yeah, there's the uh, Jacksonville jaguars. That's probably very true. Pay it all out. What's up, brother? Hell engaged, Sam. Same time every day. I'm doing the best I can. Consistency is the mark of champions. It's the traction to your goals. If you can work out every day for 15 minutes, that yields a lot of results. If you can make $50 a day on your side hustle, that's $1,500 a month. Even if you made half, $25 a day on your side hustle. That's $750 a month. Never despise small, consistent, consistent 
habits. Never despise them because they yield great results. Thank you, Peyton Olin, for the acknowledgement. Pat, go laughing. Good laughter to give us all. Tony, damn it. Look at me late on these chats. Three palm trees, Tony. Thank you for your graciousness. Thank you for your graciousness. Thank you for your graciousness. A thank you for every palm tree. And I know it's still not enough. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Gerarda. Thank you, Twista. Thank you to all my members. Thank you to everyone watch. Thank you. Gratitude. Um, Paco is laughing. Good. Tony, Sam, got a question. The band one matching outfits. You think it's a good idea? I was thinking purple. Well, I think of Prince, Purple Rain. Purple is the color of royalty. Uh, if you're going to be in a band, purple is an interesting color. I would go with that. Do you need matching outfits? Well, it's a business write-off. Uh, depending on, I, I would say, depending on the budget and depending on how you guys present your show, I would say, yeah, as long as it's within budget and if you think, like, it has value. I mean, I, th I certainly think there's value in a level of uniform. Because it does bring solidarity. Um, now, where it brings solidarity, it distinguish it um, extinguishes individuality. So, I would say a uniform. If you're doing a, a um, presentation that needs to be in sync, if your musical presentation with your band needs to display individuality, like there's a saxophone solo, then there's a guitar solo, then there's a, a acapella, I would not have uniforms. Why? You need to enhance indiv individuality, not not uh, solidarity when you have solo parts of songs. So I vote no uniform. Why? I don't like wearing uniforms. Uh, but uh, that's my opinion. Uh, Aaron, you've reached out. That's what matters. Good suggestion. I I hope you can drop the feeling bad about it. Yeah, you know, it's tough, you know, because there's no exact science to doing the right thing. I mean, certainly I analyze the things I've done and I think overall I'm right. Uh, you know, but overall being empathetic, uh, you still, you still want to always be like, loving to everyone, but it's impossible. Now, I'm not trying to say, though, that I'm always this loving person and everyone, you know, is wrong. No, no, no. But again, when I have boundaries, it's not just because of them. It's because of me. It's because what I need to not go bad, not necessarily what they do, even though for me, it's what they do, but it's for, it's for me. Like, as an example, when I broke up with a girl, you know, and I would say no, not because I don't still respect and love you, but it's because that for me, I am going to take that friendship wrong way and it's going to be negative for me and that's going to be a negative relationship for us. So let's not be friends. Let's be cool and respectful and let's go our separate ways. Uh, now, some people may disagree with that, but I think that's, I think that's what has to be. But there's different approaches to life, but I've witnessed that most people are in a very dysfunctional place when it comes to relationships. That's why I don't take advice. Aaron, all sounds like strong and healthy boundaries to me. Thank you, Aaron. You know, I'm grateful. Look, I mean, I think back as, as a child, you know, uh, it's tough. Thank you. Now, let's not, let's go forward. Pat, thank you again, Tony. Pat, the artist known as Prince wore purple. Yeah, purple rain, purple rain. He looked nice in it, yeah. And he made pancakes for Eddie Murphy and his brother. Rest in peace, Charlie Murphy. Belt. Tony Gilbert, that's a cute kitty in your profile. Tony, thanks, Michelle. That's my cat, Gizmo. Michelle, I have the movie Gremlins. I remember that movie. Tony, that's the exact reason I named him Gizmo. Oh, was that from the movie? I just remember the movie title. I don't remember the uh, movie itself. Pago, saxophone emoji. Good job, Pago. I go, yes, bears in Florida. Are there? Maybe you're right. Hopefully they're not my campground when I get back because I got to take a shower and I got to end this live feed. But I know it's hard to end something like it was hard to leave my mom come to Florida, but everything has a season where you must cut off uh, and then go back depending on the situation. I hope my video helped you somewhat tonight. I feel torn when it comes to making certain decisions.
When in doubt, don't buy. When in doubt, take the promotion. When in doubt, healthy boundaries. Your daily routine above your asset allocation. But there is a real psychological discernment that you need when it comes to do you want to buy a house? Do, do you want to spend certain money? I don't have the issue with the money spend at this point, as long as it's below my means. I have an issue with the emotional commitment. You know, like in the beginning of my journey, I said, I want to get my bag a little bit better. I want to build up these side hustles. Now I said, well, I could, thank you, Pedro Nolan. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Tony. I was saying, well, now I could do it below my means. And, and I, it's within wisdom. Again, wisdom will be the base for the right decision. But there's no exact science, so we still need faith to overcome fear. God, help us make the right decision. So I said to myself, emotionally, is it healthier for me to have a home base or not? Now, when a psychopath passes, parks next to me, I say home base. When my home base has a water leak, I say no man. <laughs> Let's just go to bed. Why? We beat this horse to death. Thank you again, Tony. Yep, you said purple tie if you want. And then throw the purple tie out if you want to unbutton the shirt. Make sure we look and play personally as well. But I think we're mad. Uh, my suit's better than, oh, you wear your suit better than him? They do. I want to tell you this, guys. I never want to wear a suit again, even though I had some great looking suits. I want to be in basketball shorts with no underwear and cutoffs the rest of my life. I want to be comfortable. I worked hard to be comfortable the rest of my life. Love to you, Tony. Aaron. Thanks so much. Have a great night all. Thank you, Aaron. Great comments tonight. Great insight. Shout out to your sons. They'll figure it out. They're smart. Uh, they got love as their foundation. They'll figure it out. Or they'll just live their life best they can. I mean, that's okay. Pay the Nolan. Love you, bro. Love you too. A reciprocal appreciation. Pay the Nolan. Keep your head up. Thank you for the encouragement. Brandon. What's up, Brandon? Finding your cast four days ago. I've packed my gear to bug out and walking 6,000 steps daily. You're really inspiring me. Thanks, Sam. Well, thank you, Brandon. Self-care for the win. 10,000 steps per day, which equals five miles, is the recommended amount. But start small, start at half of that, then incrementally work up. Try to go for uh, a 15-minute walk every hour. I would not recommend to do 6,000 steps at once or 10,000 steps at once. I would recommend every hour, go for about a 15-minute walk. And out of the entire day, maybe go for one or two walks. That's a half hour. If you do that, you'll live a great life and eat healthy. Pago, I got to wake up early. Me too, Pago. 5 a.m. for me. Love to you. Guys and girls, thank you. We're going to try to go to another dimension with these live feeds. Some of them will still be fire. Some of them will be self-control. Why? I got to balance it. I got to grow to another dimension of growth. Okay, This is uh, not easy. Okay. So we're going to figure it out. And uh, thank you for